Uh, that's right. Lawmakers agree something must be done to extend aid, but right now they seem pretty far apart on what that aid package will look like. But some positive developments tonight. As you said, researchers in England are making progress on a vaccine. Tonight, new hopes for a vaccine from Oxford, England. Researchers are having promising results with an experimental vaccine being developed by the University of Oxford and the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca. The study in The Lancet looked at more than 1,000 healthy adults and found the vaccine induced strong antibody and immune responses. What this vaccine does particularly well is trigger both arms of the immune system. So in addition to neutralizing antibodies, which other vaccines do, we also see a very strong T-cell response. Researchers saw the strongest immune response in the 10 people who got two doses. So I need a scratch. Half the people in the study got the coronavirus vaccine. The other half got a meningitis vaccine. People who had the COVID vaccine had side effects, including fever, chills, and muscle pain more often than the other group. Dr. Barry Bloom is with the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. They gave a small number of individuals uh, the equivalent of Tylenol called paracetamol in the UK. And that lessened the symptoms quite significantly to make them more tolerable without compromising the immune responses. Now researchers will enroll tens of thousands of people to see if the vaccine is able to protect people from COVID-19. Vaccines remain the world's best hope at controlling this epidemic. And based on images like this from Florida, a vaccine can't come quickly enough. This massive block party had to be broken up by police near Orlando. 53 of Florida's hospitals have reached ICU capacity, eight of those in Miami-Dade County. Dr. Andrew Pastuski works for the county's largest health system. Oh no, there's no sense that anything's slowing down. Every day there's a need for more patients who need beds. And as states like Florida, Texas, Arizona, and even California continue to shatter records for COVID cases, today President Trump announced he will once again hold daily coronavirus briefings. I was doing them and uh, we had a lot of people watching, record numbers watching. The president stopped holding the briefings back at the end of April as polls showed they were hurting him politically and after he received sharp criticism for asking this question about using disinfectants on the virus. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Monday afternoon, the president tweeted a photo of himself wearing a mask and said some believe it is patriotic to wear a mask and that no one is more patriotic than him. This after months of playing down the importance of wearing one. Meanwhile, Republican leaders also met with President Trump at the White House to negotiate the next coronavirus relief bill. Kids in school, jobs and health care could be the theme of the proposal that we hope to come together and present to our Republicans. Negotiations are still underway, but the current GOP proposal is expected to cost around $1 trillion. Republicans want tax credits that incentivize businesses to bring people back to work, as well as continued unemployment benefits, but with conditions. We're going to make sure that we don't pay people more money to stay home than go to work. We want to make sure that people who can go to work safely can do so. Negotiators say school funding is a priority, but the Washington Post reports it could be tied to schools reopening in the fall. Democrats are pushing back on those terms. Schools are preparing for the fall without the necessary guidance and resources to open safely. The country is crying out for relief. And right now, people receiving $600 in weekly federal aid will see that expire potentially at the end of the month if extended Republicans want that aid reduced by two to $400. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Tom White. Pat, back to you. All right, thanks for that, Tom.